Now we are going to observe some parameters. Now, but those parameters you can intuitively tell me. Can you fill in this inequality blank? What is it? So, f is a flow, let me write down, right? f is a flow. What is the value of the flow? It is the effective amount of current that is flowing out of s, that is v belonging to v, f of s comma v minus summation v belonging to v, f of v comma s. This is the net current or the net flow coming out of the vertex s that is the definition of the value of the flow. Now, so this is s and this is a formula for the effective current. This fellow is the effective flow that is flowing from s to t. This is the effective flow that is going from s to t. What is the connection between the effective flow that is leaving s and the effective flow that is crossing over from s to t. Hmm? Which direction is less than or equal to? This is less than or equal to, this is, it could be less than, is it? Where is the flow going then? You are pouring water into s, right? And you have conservation condition, it has to go out. Right? At every vertex it has to cross, it has to leave, right? whatever comes in should go out. Right? So, if you say it is strictly less than s, no you said less than or equal to. So, I am asking you why did you say less than? So, intuitively because of the fact that conservation is respected at every node we will boldly guess that it is actually equal to u, right. The picture is very clear, the right hand side is the effect of the net flow of current outside or leaving s. The left hand side is that you have taken the network and broken it into two parts, s and t. One side contains s, the other side contains t, right. And you are looking at the net flow that goes from s to t, intuitively both the values must be equal and we will formally prove it. We will write a sequence of equations which will essentially lead to this, fine. So, this is one more, this is the second thing that I should prove in the last 15 minutes. Next very interesting thing right, is f of s comma t and this is going to give us the upper bound, right. So, I wish I could cut and paste. It is this formula, right. So, let me write this formula again. It is summation v belonging to s, summation u belonging to t, f of v comma u minus summation v belonging to s, u belonging to t, f of u comma v, fine. Because the flow is positive, this is lesser than or equal to negative term I will remove, the subtracted term I will remove. This is summation u belonging to s, whatever, okay. So, this is u and v or v and u, v, u belonging to t, f of v comma u, right. Since f is non-negative. Actually, this is also lesser than or equal to, can you guess what would be the natural next step? Recall we want to place an upper bound on this and I have convinced you that I am going to prove you that these two are equal and I am interested in an upper bound on this quest, this guy because I do not know if the Ford full cousin algorithm will keep growing up to infinity. So, I want to prove an upper bound. So, I am coming towards an upper bound starting from f, this is equal, this is lesser than or equal to this, right, for a particular flow. What is this lesser than or equal to? Capacity, right. So, this is summation v belonging to s, summation u belonging to t, c of v comma u because every flow respects the capacity of the edge. This is less than or equal to the capacity of s comma t. Right. And 
what I did not emphasize, which I will emphasize now, is that <coughs> consider any S and T cut, the value of the flow is less than or equal to the value of any S T cut, right? If F is a flow. and S union T is equal to V, S intersection T is equal to M T, S belongs to S, T belongs to T, then the value of this flow is going to be equal to F of S comma T, this is less than or equal to the capacity of this S T cut. In particular, In particular, the value of the flow is lesser than or equal to the value of the ST cut, the minimum ST cut. Right? Actually, again, I like to present this in terms of electrical networks. Right? If you apply a 1 volt source across a point, across a pair of points in a resistive network, the amount of current that goes through it is exactly equal to the effective resistance of that network as seen from there, right. So, V is equal to I R, right. So, it is the amount of current will be equal to 1 divided by R which would be the conductance of that particular network, right. And therefore, the amount of current is that part which provides the maximum resistance or the minimum conductance. So, the min cut is same as the maximum resistance or the minimum conductance in a resistive network. I am assuming you remember your electrical circuits, right. So, they are just the same, right. So, this is just a more generic framework in which this whole thing is presented, right. So, therefore, the maximum flow is upper bounded by the minimum value of the ST cut. Now, I am going to complete the argument and show you that the maximum flow, this will be, so therefore, which are the things I should prove? This I have already proved this I have to prove, this is the second term that I am supposed to prove and the first one that the augmenting is a flow at its value, I have to prove that which I will come to, right. Now, I am ready to prove the max flow min cut theorem. Right? That deserves a new page, right? it says the following are equivalent. The following three statements are equivalent. The first one, F is a max flow, 2, G F Can somebody complete this for me? If F is a max flow in the given network G, no residual network is GF, there is no ST part, super. Yeah, all of you are right, right. Does not have an ST part because if there is an ST part, you can increase the value of the flow. Three, there exists an S comma T
such that f of s t is e is equal to the capacity. What I showed you is that f of s comma t is less than or equal to the capacity. If you have a max flow, we will now one direction you have already proved. One to two you have already proved. Now I am going to show you two to three. Right? So one to two is obvious. Right? Because if you find an ST path in GF, then you can increase the value of the flow. But F is a max flow, therefore there is no ST path. Now let us prove two to three. The following are equivalent, which means we'll prove one to two, two to three, and three to four. It turns out that GF does not have an ST path. So what do you do? I have to now construct this ST partition. Right? Let us do this. So what do I do? S is equal to set of all S, sorry, can somebody guess what is S, the capital S, remember what you should do, you have a max flow, you have a flow, somebody says it is a max flow, you constructed a residual network GF, there is no path from S to T, I want you to now give me a partition of the vertex set into S, capital S and capital T such that capital S contains S and capital T contains T, the terminus T. So can you give me S, what is your idea? How do you, yeah, can you, that is correct, right, but what would be that cut? Because I want little bit more, I want to argue that the value of that flow is actually equal to the capacity of that cut, what would be that cut? So you simply take all the vertices which are reachable from S. So you take this residual network, take all the vertices which are reachable from S, right, in GF, fine, right, and T is equal to V minus S. and t is equal to v minus s, right. Now let us go to g. Right. Consider g, consider s and consider t, right. In G, these were the edges which were present, right? Each one had a certain capacity. So maybe this is capacity U, V, and so on and so forth, right? In G, F, what has happened? All these edges have vanished. What does that mean if they have vanished? Which means their residual capacity is 0, right? In G, F, Are you getting me? Can you see this? Right. So very interesting tricky step, right. So GF does not have an augmenting path. So what do you do? You start at S and you visit, you, re, you group all the vertices which are reachable from small s and you call that as capital S. That set you call it capital S. The complement is called T. Take this partition. You take this partition and go to G. In G it would have looked like this, right. Some edges are all there, right, and they all have some capacities, they might even be 0, right, does not matter, some capacities are there. In G of all these edges have vanished, that is why there is no, otherwise you would have found one more vertex which is actually you put inside T which should have been an S. All these edges are not there, their residual capacity is 0. 
What is the formula for residual capacity for an edge which is present in the network? It is this formula. Right? And that is equal to 0 which implies in your flow f of u comma v is equal to c of u comma v. Therefore, the capacity of the cut is equal to f of u comma v right which is greater than or equal to right sorry right no this is greater than or equal to well I should not get lazy Am I correct? Because I am subtracting a positive term. And what is the last term? What is this equal to? It is a value of f which is f of s comma t. Right? I did not say equal to yet. I only showed greater than or equal to. I proved the other direction. I am sorry for jumping. I proved that for every cut the value of f f of s comma t is less than or equal to c of s comma t that was easy right but now you see this the trick here if f is a max flow gf does not have an augmenting path if gf does not have an augmenting path you start from s and you reach every vertex which is reachable from s group it into s rest of them is called t right now you do some logical analysis right you say let me look at this partition s comma t in the graph g right why is there no path from s to t in gf right because all those edges have residual capacity 0 what is the definition of residual capacity this is here which means in the flow f f of u comma v must be equal to c of u comma v now you write this chain of implications c of s comma t is equal to this by definition this follows from this observation right and this is greater than or equal to the term where you subtract something more and that is equal to f of s comma t. Therefore, when you have a max flow and you take the special partition, the capacity of the cut is at least as large as the flow. Therefore, the capacity of this cut is equal to f of s comma t. Yes, right. So, the final claim they cannot be a smaller ST cut, no because right. So, if you have attained right. So, you know that a certain value is always lesser than or equal to the value of the minimum ST cut. Therefore, C of S comma T is the minimum ST cut, is the value of the minimum ST cut. The capacity of S comma T is the value of the minimum ST cut. So, if you find the max flow, then look at all the vertices reachable from S, that is the minimum ST cut. So, this is the max flow min cut theorem. The other direction 3 goes to 1 because I said 
is there a question in this right so this this step is sequence of lot of small 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 ob interesting observations right? i have just proved that if you have a max flow then there is a cut whose value is equal to the value of that max flow and that cut is the minimum st cut what is interesting and i mean i'm sure when you go back and read it it will all become very clear the cut is a graph theoretic parameter a flow is something that i asked you to calculate and it turns out that the maximum value for the flow is equal to this minimum graph theoretic parameter the minimum value for this graph theoretic parameter so that's the very interesting i mean third max min relationship right so recall menger's theorem then we proved that uh, maximum matching is equal to minimum vertex cover in bipartite graphs and now we've shown that max flow is equal to the minimum cut in a flow network i need to complete three goes to one what does three goes to one mean right if it's fairly easy from the definition of everything that we have discussed so far right so if you ever increase the value of the flow further then the value of the flow will be more than the capacity of one particular cut and that cannot happen right therefore f is a maximum flow you cannot increase the value of this flow any further because if one of you increases the value of the flow and claims that i will ask you how is it that you have increases the increase the value beyond the value of a cut we already proved that that cannot happen right so this completes the proof of the max flow min cut theorem right so i have about 6 minutes so what i will do is i will show you how to prove the two things that i have not yet proved right so let me write them down and okay before that are there questions i need to prove two lemmas right so for the for your interest let me write this down we need to argue that this is one thing to prove and the second thing to prove is that so both of them are very similar right so to prove to prove that so what do you know you know that f is a flow and f prime is a flow in gf so now let us prove that f augmented with f prime is a flow so let us do this work of proving first thing so let me erase this i'll move this to a next slide these are the things that i should prove right so what i will do is i'll just give you a flavor of what kind of algebra that you should do to complete these proofs it's very easy right just requires you to just play around with the equations a bit so let us write down the definition of right you recall this this is f of u comma v plus f prime of u comma v minus f prime of v comma u right so let's tick off the positivity can somebody convince me that this is positive why is this greater than or equal to zero there's a subtraction term right 
So, you need to remember that f is a flow in G, f prime is a flow in G f the residual network f. Why should this formula be positive, be non negative? Exactly, right. So, now let us just look at this, right. So, what, what she is basically pointing out is that this term is positive, right. This f prime of v comma u, right, for an edge which is present in the network, right, is actually the f of u comma v, right. So, remember that you are looking at a particular edge. U V, right? Recall the definition. What what you would have done, right? So you would have said f prime of v comma u by the definition of residual capacity would have been, sorry, sorry. I think that's not the way to say this, right? So if you look at f prime, then the value of this is upper bounded by the residual capacity of Cf of v comma u. So, let me write it that way. The first inequality is that this f prime of v comma u right, is upper bounded by the residual capacity in f of v comma u. Right. And uh, the residual capacity right, of uh, Cf of u comma u, of v comma u right there are two possibilities here right? you might have written this as c of v comma u minus f of v comma u right no for oh, the edges uv only right yeah i am sorry and yeah, I got it, I got it, right. So, let us just recall this, right. So, I am looking at this particular edge uv, right. And uh, right? so, therefore, this would have, this would have actually been equal to f of u comma v, right. So, let us just look at it. This is the definition of the residual network. You have uv, if you have a flow of f, then the capacity of this edge would have been f of right sorry let me rename this correctly f v comma u right the capacity of this edge would have been f of u comma v right these two would cancel right so therefore these two terms would cancel and this would be equal to Right, or rather this would be greater than or equal to f prime of u comma v right and this is greater than or equal to 0 because that was a positive value on the flow. Right. So, by using the same inequality let us just check. So, therefore, the positivity is taken care of. Let us check that you do not violate the capacity. So, what do you know? So, you know that this term was not violating capacity, right. This is actually the residual capacity, right, f prime of u comma v. So, this would have been, so therefore, this term is less than because of its positivity, right, because of the positivity of this, this is less than or equal to f of u comma v plus f prime of u comma v. But what is f prime of u comma v? So, this is u comma v, this is u comma v. So, this is equal to the capacity of u comma v in the network minus f of u comma v. That is the definition of the residual capacity, sorry. That is the definition of right. So, f prime of u comma v is less than or equal to the residual capacity Cf, sorry. Cf of u comma v 
because f prime is a flow in the residual network and cf of u comma v is exactly equal to this value therefore the augmented flow that is f augmented with f prime right is this cancels and this cancels right So therefore, there are two things that we have taken care of that this is greater than or equal to 0, the value, the augmented flow is greater than or equal to 0 and it does not violate capacity on any arc. Now we need to look at conservation. Okay. I think I will just stop here right? because most of this is just observations of, uh, so when you look at conservation, you have to write down at any node. summation v any u other than s comma t you have to write down that this is equal to f augmented with f prime right v comma u right so what you do is you expand this formula out by using this definition at every place and expand the right hand side also using this and then you will see that things will neatly cancel. Right? So that is what I mean by saying once you understand what this actually is, right, conservation and will, will be easy to verify and similarly to check that the value of this flow right, is again combination of intuition and the algebra. Right? So I will just stop here and let me just summarize. So we define network flows we looked at the Ford Fulkerson template right. we argued that it terminates integer capacities keep this in mind when you read a standard textbook Corman license and you will see that the capacities can be real numbers for which Ford Fulkerson algorithm will not terminate. Right? There are examples of flow networks actually you can go and Google right? just Google network flow instances for which Ford Fulkerson does not terminate and you will see a nice flow network where the Ford Fulkerson algorithm will run forever it will never reach the max flow in the limit it will reach the max flow but it will never in finite number of steps achieve the maximum flow right it's a very interesting thing because we put integer capacities it will always terminate right and on termination terminates with max flow and we also proved that max flow is equal to the minimum st cut right? so what you will do next is try and look at interesting implementations of this